If you're coding by hand, troubleshooting with console logs, and looking up issues and errors using Google, you're coding the hard way. In this video, we're going to look at the latest paradigm in coding, and maybe you'll stop coding and start chopping. There is only one stupid person in this scenario, and it's not the LLM. That's Steve Yegi calling you stupid. He's adamant that you are probably coding wrong. So let's talk about the way developers code and have coded in the past. No developer remembers everything. We all have to look things up. And way back in the late 1900s, developers had to use physical books to remember things, to troubleshoot, and to find solutions to issues that they have. So I guess you could call that book-oriented programming, or boop, Jason Langsdorf. Then came Google, and this significantly sped up the process of developing applications. You could quickly find answers and look things up, and so that could be called Google-oriented programming, goop. And then there's Stack Overflow, soup. But now, even better than all of these is CHOP, chat-oriented programming. CHOP is the method of coding via iterative conversations with an LLM. It will make any developer faster and more efficient at their tasks. And here is another quote from Steve. A Google search is, it reeks of desperation. Yes, Google search has now become the slower coding assistant. So I know what you're thinking. LLMs hallucinate, they get it wrong. How can we trust them? So when you have an issue and you use Google, is the first thing that pops up always right? No, you have to dig, it's iterative. Sometimes you have to piece together uh, solutions from various sources. Uh, it can be very time consuming and there is an art to Googling to find answers quickly. And so it's the same with LLMs. You might get a wrong answer. And so you have to keep refining and quickly you'll learn the art of chopping. And when you get the hang of it, it's much faster than Googling. I promise you'll never Google again. And in the end, you have to understand the code to recognize whether a solution will work or not. And so you're still in control. So chop is coding via iterative prompt refinement. You're literally having a conversation with the LLM, refining the output until you achieve your goal. And you may see better results depending on which large language model you use. Sometimes you may even want to use multiple LLMs uh, depending on the use case and what you're doing. So let me walk you through a short demo of CHOP in action. Now this video is sponsored by Sourcegraph Cody, but you can do all of this with any AI coding assistant. I'm using Cody here because it, it's really great at chopping. And if you want to give it a try, there is a link in the description below. So I have a blank Next.js app here. There's nothing in our homepage at all. And then I have Cody over here on the right. And we can see here that I'm chatting with my current repository the page.tsx file, and I can even add extra resources such as ShadCN UI, which I want to use on this page. Notice also that we can choose which large language model we want to use, and then we can type our prompt here. Okay, so here is my basic prompt that I'm gonna start with, and let's just see what it gives me. Create a layout for a Netflix style video service. Use ShadCN UI components where possible, provide terminal instructions for any Shad CN UI components which need to be installed. Uh, we need a header, sidebar, and video cards. The cards should be in a flex box and everything should be responsive. Let's just see what it gives us. Let's resize this a bit so we can uh, see what it's telling us. So it is going to use card and scroll area from Shad CN UI. And let's see, we've got home, sidebar, main content, header, video cards, da, da, da. Okay, well, let's see. And it also gives us instructions here that we uh, need to NPX Shad CN UI, add card and scroll area. And okay, so let's apply this and let's, let's see what this looks like. So we're gonna apply that. And then let's go ahead and copy this and we'll do that in the terminal. And we'll go ahead and accept all of this. And we've got some red squigglies because we need to do those uh, terminal installs. So let's open up the terminal and let's go ahead and run these. And we could have installed or added the card and the scroll area in one, in one go, but this is fine as well. All right, so now let's just verify over here in our folder structure. We should have 
our UI components of card and scroll area. Okay, perfect. And this is not yelling at us anymore. So let's go ahead and save this and let's see what it looks like. I'll go back into the terminal, npm run dev, and let's go over to our web page and see what it did. Okay, this is not bad at all. Uh, just to begin with, we even have placeholder images in here. Uh, video flicks, we've got a sidebar, movies, TV shows, my list. Um, we can't click on any of these yet, but I mean, for the small little prompt that I gave it, this is pretty amazing. Let's see if it's responsive. So let's go in. Okay, that looks, oh, oh, looks pretty good. Let's keep going. All right, so the sidebar is not responsive, but the flex box is responsive. Okay, so I mean, again, very great first iteration. And so what we could do now is we could highlight this area of the sidebar and let's go ahead and say, if we press option K, uh, we, can, we can interact with Cody here. And let's say, uh, make this responsive. Let's just see if Cody can do anything with that. Okay, so it's just, uh, we can go ahead and accept this. And it is just saying, hidden if the screen is too small. Uh, ideally, we would want to have maybe um, a hamburger menu or something, some kind of menu to pop out, um, but I was not very descriptive in my prompt. So again, this goes back to having a conversation with the AI and iterating through each change. So let's look a little bit closer at the code here. So it has a very good understanding of Tailwind CSS. Uh, this is pretty interesting, so we're not actually bringing any data in, uh, but it's just making a fake array here of 12 items. And then for each one, we're bringing in a unique photo from Pixum. Interesting. Video title, again, using that index number. All in all, really great first iteration. So I hope you can see this massive production boost that you get from using an AI coding assistant like Cody. This would have taken much longer without it. Apart from that, the, the code looks pretty good. Uh, can it be refined? Sure. Can I use AI to help me refine and refactor? Absolutely. Now, again, you still have to have an understanding of the code the AI is writing and recognize when it's doing something wrong. It's essential to balance reliance on an AI uh, with developing foundational skills. You still need these skills. And if you don't understand something, ask the AI to explain it. Have a conversation with the AI. So let's talk about junior developers specifically. One of the amazing things an AI coding assistant like Cody can do is help you understand a foreign code base. It's a scenario that every developer faces, but it's much harder on a junior developer. On day one, you might be presented with a large code base and told to familiarize yourself with it. Uh, there may be some documentation, some random comments, but that varies. The quickest way to understand where things are at, what functions do what, is by asking in AI questions. Take this repo, for example. This is a book inventory uh, repo that I found on Vercel Labs. And let's see, it actually is um, a book database, kind of like a Netflix for books. <laughs> so uh, you can choose the publication year, minimum rating. Uh, you've got all these different filters here and uh, say popular. Oh, there's no popular books found. That's interesting. Uh, no popular books with a five-star rating. Hmm. Oh, there we go. So here's this one by Steve Jobs. Sure. And so if we go back to the repo here, uh, how do I find things? How do I know what's doing what? I know this is a, a Next.js app, so I understand like the layout here, but where's the logic? So I could go over to Cody, and we're just querying our current repository, not a specific file. Again, I could choose different models here. So if I want to understand the basics, uh, an overview, I could just say, what does this repo do? And it's got a pretty good answer here. Application built with Next.js, Drizzle ORM, PostgreSQL, and it manages a large database of over 2 million books sourced from Goodreads um, and gives us some good information about the repo. Very high level overview. So let's say that I was tasked with changing the amount of books displayed on each page. Right now it looks like there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times four is 28. Let's see if we can find that logic. So again, let's uh, prompt our current repository and let's say in which file is the logic to specify how many books are displayed per page.
The logic to specify how many books are displayed per page is likely in the file libdbqueries.ts. So let's go ahead and look at that libdbqueries.ts. Uh, and it looks like it's right here. Items per page, 28. So without knowing anything about this repo, I was quickly able to find uh, what I was tasked with doing and update it. And what about senior developers? Well, not only do AI assistants help you to understand code bases, but they also help you to reduce cognitive load. There's less that a developer has to remember. We can leave all of the mundane tasks up to the AI and focus on more complex, high-level issues, features, and implementations. For instance, if I wanted to refactor this entire code base to use MongoDB instead of Postgres, uh, that would be a large undertaking. But with the help of an AI assistant like Cody, it could be much more manageable and be delivered in less time than it would take you by yourself. Let's see what Cody has to say about this. Okay, so it gives us a pretty good roadmap of what we would need to do. So first of all, we need to replace the database driver. Obviously, instead of uh, Postgres, we would uh, install MongoDB or an ODM like Mongoose, which would be a great option. Then we need to update that database connection and then adjust the schema definitions, update the queries and data access methods, modify the seeding scripts, update the search functionality, remove Postgres specific features, update environment variables, adjust API routes, and then test. So now, based on this, we could go step by step, uh, move through each of the files needed, and have Cody help us update each one of these. The methods developers have used to code have changed over the years. Adopting new methods is not a bad thing. Why not use the tools that you have at your disposal? If you haven't already, give chat-oriented programming a try. Let me know what you think. If this video was helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.